Climate Conversations on Afternoons with Helen Farmer. With Dubai Holding, together for the good of tomorrow. Paul Patterson with us today. He's the CEO and founder of Elevation Sustainable Building Solutions. And we are talking about some of the little changes we can make in our homes. On the topic of ACs there, the AC wars that happen in many a home and indeed office, she said in her jumper in the studio to keep the keep the equipment safe and cool. Um, just one degree can be saving you some serious durhams. And they're saying one degree separates my wife and I. I like it warmer. She prefers it a touch cooler. The difference is one degree. Um, Paul, what about the maintenance of our ACs? Can that make a difference in terms of making them more sustainable, more efficient and, and ultimately affecting our bills as well? Yeah. Um, so, yes, it can. So it, it is a great idea to keep on top of your maintenance, get regular cleaning. Uh, what can happen is if there's any uh, dust build up inside of the ductwork that, that, that gives you the, the cold air, that means that it costs less uh, power for, for the fan to blow the air. Um, and for every, I'll give another uh, percentage there, for every 1% uh, of more pressure, of more dirt that you have inside of your ductwork, that can result in, in, in 3% more of electricity. And that's due to something called the fan laws, which is a very interesting. The uh, fan laws? The fan laws, something uh, which all building services professionals will love me to be mentioning on the radio. So Every day shout out to day. everybody. <laughs> uh, Tim saying, what is the um, lifespan of an AC unit? A well, lifespan we would expect probably 20 years would be uh, a reasonable lifespan and what you would expect from that type of uh, equipment. You mentioned earlier smart homes. What about smart AC controls? Where does this come into play and are we seeing it in kind of commonplace already? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's getting more and more popular. You may have heard, I think there's something called, the, I think it's the Google Nest. I think Google bought them in the end. So this is a, a kind of machine learning type device which uh, sits on your wall. You, you set the temperature. It will start to learn how you're using the building. It will know when you're coming in, when you're coming out. It will switch it on, switch it off to suit your actual occupancy. So it will start to work to optimise itself to suit what you're after and to suit your own comfort conditions. And that can yield about 10 to 20% you would expect if you invest in one of them. Wow. And this is something you could do as a homeowner. I'm guessing as a rental it might be a little bit more complicated. It, it, it is a challenge here. There is a split, of course, as we know, um, in terms of uh, residential ownership and, and um, landlords and, and owners. Uh, it is something that you can do. Speak to your landlord, see if they're willing to invest in it, because obviously the more attractive and the more sustainable a home is, mm. uh, it's probably got. A, uh, it's got a, it probably becomes more attractive. Okay. Um, I was thinking about this conversation today when I was, one, brushing my teeth and two, washing my hands because it is November now and I was thinking, is it time to put on the water heater? I'm concluding another week or so. I would have no idea if it has any impact on our dewa bills turning on that water heater, but I know turning off our water when we're brushing teeth and I wondered if you had any intel on that. Showering, bathing, drinking, cooking, what can we be doing ultimately, Paul? Well, the, the water use of UE residents here uh, is actually quite significantly higher than what it would be on average as a global average. Uh, the, the number is around 500 to 550 litres of water is what, what on average is used here, which is a huge amount of water. So very much so, switch off your taps when you're brushing your teeth, that, that's a real quick win. Um, I don't want to say just don't shower for 15 minutes but maybe you only need a five minute shower but there is ways to use less water and make small incremental changes in your daily behaviors that will compound over time should i be turning my water heater on or oh, should we should we be thinking bigger about how we can heat our water in a different way this is the age-old conundrum when do we make that switch <laughs> i think you probably do need that level of hot water because it becomes a kind of hygiene type question um, there is ways to actually use uh, solar hot water, uh, solar hot water systems to provide uh, you hot water which can significantly use, uh, reduce your electricity use. So there is other ways which you can uh, produce the hot water that are a little bit more sustainable than an electric tank above your uh, sink. Joining us in studio today, we've got Paul Patterson, CEO and founder of Elevation Sustainable Building Solutions based in Mazdaw City, uh, on a bit of a mission to make buildings more sustainable. And looking at a lot of commercial projects, but also some of the homes that we live in too. Um, to come back to that smart word, smart lighting. I mean, the fact that your AC can learn from your behaviours 
boggles my mind. Are we seeing this technology applied in other areas, other technologies? There is smart bulbs out there. There's, there's platforms to control your lighting rather than just have a switch. You can set up automation circuits on, uh, if you've got an iPhone on Apple Home, there's ways to integrate uh, Philips low energy LED bulbs. There's lots of ways that you can start to schedule things to perhaps remove the risk of leaving things on when they don't need to be on, mm -hmm. as an example. How should we be petitioning our landlords on some of these things? That's a, that's a very good question. Talk to them, open the conversation. Maybe they, they're also willing to contribute to, to everyone's shared goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just open the conversation, see what they're willing to contribute to. Uh, I, I understand that it's not quite as straightforward in this region, but it's definitely something we should at least be having the conversation about and trying to push it forward. Now, one of the few programmes that me and my husband can agree on is Grand Designs. And we watched one last night and I... Listen, I'm not going to lie. I like it when the budget goes out the window. It makes me feel, you know, normal. I like it when it... The, the wife always seems to be pregnant at the end of it. I do, I, it it's, it's, it's an amazing programme to me. If you're not familiar with Grand Designs, it is people, not, not often professionals, creating their own homes and being followed on television as part of the process. The one last night was so enchanting. It was a woman who'd been a furniture designer and and build her and she decided after retiring that she wanted to set up her own home and it was a phrase I'd never heard of before. She was building her own home from timber that she'd used throughout her career. She was building it in a part of you know a woodland. She, they weren't going in with cranes and diggers because they didn't want to disrupt the roots of the trees and she was creating a passive home. Is this a phrase you're familiar with Paul? Yes, uh, passive home, passive house, it, it's a movement originated in Europe and it's all about designing out the need for energy by uh, designing very, very, very efficient homes that need less energy to either heat or less energy to cool. So yeah, it's a growing movement and one I think we will see spread. Well, that was my last question to you. Get the crystal ball out. Where, what kind of conversations do you think we'll be having about climate and homes and building construction? in 10 years time? What are things that seem a bit out there now but could be completely commonplace then? I think there's, there's, there's two parts, isn't there? There's the energy transition, which is how do we decarbonise the, the energy supply? And there's the, the decarbonisation of real estate and how we're using energy. So that's the kind of demand driven side, which we were talking about. I think real estate, uh, construction will move to be all about understanding life cycle carbon, how much carbon is involved from the start of a project to the very, very end, and we will see new technologies or ways to build without using as much carbon is, is where we will be heading. Paul, for anyone that wants to find out more about the work that you're doing, avail of your expertise, your insights consulting, consulting what's the best way of getting in touch? Uh, please visit our website, get in touch via our website, or uh, yeah, www.elevation-sbs.com, or I'm on also on LinkedIn. People will say I'm on LinkedIn too often, <laughs> but they're, Wrong. Wrong. So, yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, if, if you want to send me the word build, um, I will send you the link there for, uh, for Elevation. Thank you so much for your time. It's really interesting to hear about what's been happening behind the scenes, what's happening in buildings all around us. As I said, as, as guests, as shoppers, as visitors that we might not be aware of, and also the implications that we're putting into our own home. So, Paul Patterson, thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you very much.